Hello there, welcome back to this video on the ABC Networking Community channel on YouTube. I'm Herman and this is the second video on ALE or Analytics and Location Engine and uh, more specific on the WebSocket Tunnel. So in the previous video, please check that if you didn't see that and uh, need some basic knowledge about ALE. Uh, we uh, described ALE, what it does, uh, get data from instant APs and controller APs in uh, Wi-Fi proximity events and then uh, a third party analytics provider can use uh, either a REST API to uh, get data on demand from it or it can subscribe uh, to a zero MQ uh, feed for specific topics like uh, devices coming in reach of an access point or outside of reach of access point or entering an area, exiting an area, um, using specific uh, locations and uh, stuff like that. And the problem we ended with in the last video is a security issue where we have a cloud analytics provider somewhere um, on the internet where the ALE server collecting all the data is in the internal network and many organizations have a big fat firewall in between and the security folks of that firewall they typically don't like to have inbound traffic from the internet through the firewall to the ALE. So the solution to this issue is that we can uh, tunnel traffic out from the ALE to the cloud provider. And to do that, uh, there is something built in in the ALE, and that's called a WebSocket tunnel. And the WebSocket tunnel is a tunnel that's initiated from the ALE server to the cloud provider, and uh, it will end there on a WebSocket tunnel. And uh, that WebSocket tunnel allows uh, the uh, cloud provider to uh, get access to a port on the ALE server. So uh, through this tunnel, we can get access to the uh, zero MQ port or to the REST API port to get data um, uh, over. So um, let's bring on and uh, let's show you that uh, the ALE server. So this is my ALE server. Um, let's see with the feed reader we saw in last video that we can get data. So we are subscribing here to the 7779 and we see here indeed uh, proximity events uh, coming in. So there are devices here um, in the neighborhood of my ALE server. So what we will do is set up a uh, WebSocket tunnel here on a second server, then uh, create a tunnel from the ALE through the firewall to that server and uh, we will see that we can get back through the tunnel uh, to get the same data on the remote side, so on the internet. So to do that, we need to configure the um, WebSocket tunnel. So uh, in order to do that, please uh, read the manual. So there's a user guide for ALE and uh, many people tend to skip the user guides or only get the user guides if they uh, cannot find it out themselves. But um, um, I would advise you to uh, use the guide to get there. And uh, one of the things in the guides is that here under maintenance and developer, um, there is a sample WebSocket server, which is built in Java. So you can run it on any Java um, uh, capable uh, server. So in uh, my case, I will be using an uh, Ubuntu server. So uh, let's bring on that Ubuntu server. So if we check this uh, server, um, you see that we have the WebSocket server already installed here or downloaded. So it's the uh, raw download from the ALE server. And I also have here two uh, files to create a SSL certificate, a server certificate for this WebSocket server. To um, install it, um, I have a few steps here and I will post the steps below the video. So if you want to uh, copy and paste or uh, read them again, uh, check uh, below this video. So uh, first thing that you need to know is that for the WebSocket server, you will need a Java 8. And uh, by default, uh, the Ubuntu server only has uh, Java 6 and 7 in an open Java version. Um, so I decided to get the uh, official Oracle Java 8 and there's a very nice uh, PPA uh, repository for that. And uh, with these four commands, you can uh, get uh, the official Oracle Java 8 installed on your uh, Ubuntu server. 
So then the next step will be that we are um, extracting the WebSocket server. So let's do that, uh, ZXVF WebSocket server, so we can see it extracting. So it is creating an ALE directory. And uh, in that ALE directory, we have uh, the binaries, the configuration, and the libraries. And in the configuration, we can uh, change the server properties. So um, it is pretty self-explanatory. So uh, in this case, I will change the tunnel port to 4443. Um, as I don't have access to uh, port 443, we can uh, put in the server certificate here. So let's get that certificate file. So I prepared it on the server and the key file should be the dot key. Um, you see some other things, so you can disable SSL. Uh, we are using SSL um, and you can set some other things, but uh, I leave them um, as they are. So um, this should be the configuration of the WebSocket server. So it uh, should set up a server on uh, 4443 and uh, listen for I'm coming, uh, incoming requests. So let's start that server. So we uh, start up server dot sh and with the minus f flag we can prevent the server from uh, backgrounding so it will run in the foreground let's see if it's starting up so yeah we see it it's now listening on 4443 and uh, here also on an api port so we can see uh, through the api and can get data uh, of the uh, available forwarded ports so now let's get back to our ALE server. So we're back in the internal network uh, again here under configuration and the options. Uh, we have the option here, WebSocket tunnel. And uh, we need to configure here uh, a few things. So uh, we need to configure the local endpoints and the local endpoints are in the, um, um, are in the image. Um, the ports that are forwarded to, so we will put in localhost 7779 and the 8080. Um, and we have the uh, remote point, which will be the uh, WebSocket server, which will be my uh, cloud provider. So let's see local endpoints. Let me add here. So one seven seven zero, and then port seven 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 nine, and we will add here um, one seven. 127, so localhost and port 8080. And then here under the remote endpoint, I will uh, put in the WebSocket server with the uh, port that I just changed from uh, 443 default to the uh, 4443 default. So let's apply this. And uh, now in the background, the tunnel uh, should be uh, setting up. So let's see on the WebSocket server, if that happened uh, indeed. So don't see it coming up. So sometimes I need to um, do it again. So let's here first disable the SSL certificate checking. And see if it then comes up. And in my experience, you can uh, change it back um, afterwards. Uh, so sometimes it takes some time to get it uh, up and running the tunnel. Ah, so I think uh, the tunnel is up uh, indeed. So uh, what we can see here now, and uh, if you have backgrounded it, there's a logs directory uh, in which the configuration uh, or the, the logging is uh, put up. So we see a client is connected. So this is the ALE server. Uh, we see also that there is, uh, there are two tunnel maps now. Uh, so if I connect on my WebSocket server on uh, the uh, on, on port 12,000, it will be uh, forwarded to the ALE server on 7779. And if I uh, connect to uh, 12,001, it will be uh, 8080. So if we are on the uh, uh, on the server and have some uh, nice application, uh, yeah, you don't want to parse the log files. So what you can do is uh, through the API, 
uh, get that data as well. So I can curl uh, into port uh, 8700 slash clients and I can see the connected uh, tunnel, um, how long it has been up um, and the forward. So the local port and the remote port. So tunnel should be up and uh, what I did is I copied the feed reader command uh, and you can uh, use the feed reader command with the uh, minus E you can uh, let it listen to a uh, another port than the local port uh, 7779. So um, let's see uh, what happens um, and if we can connect. So uh, we see now we are subscribed to port 12,000. And uh, if we keep these uh, together, what you now can see is that uh, the events coming in on the ALE server locally are also available on the, the uh, cloud server. So. That looks uh, pretty cool. Um, so uh, yeah, what uh, now basically were, uh, happened is that we had this uh, WebSocket tunnel and uh, by connecting to uh, 12,000 on the WebSocket server, uh, we uh, connect to the ALE um, to get uh, data there. Um, and to uh, yeah, make this, uh, to, to, to go a bit further, uh, what we can do here in the local endpoints, uh, for example, we can add uh, another uh, server. So this is a switch uh, on port uh, 23. Um, so we can forward other ports and two remote hosts uh, as well. So um, let's see. Um, where is my server? So we saw here um, the feed reader, we can uh, kill it. So we see here that uh, 12,002 is now connected to um, the remote port. So I can now tell that to uh, localhost on port 12,002. And I am connected uh, through the tunnel to a, uh, to a switch. So we can use this uh, WebSocket tunnel to uh, tunnel any TCP uh, protocol uh, from a remote server, uh, which runs the WebSocket server, to the local ALE server. So that uh, concludes this uh, short demo on WebSocket on uh, the ALE. Um, yeah, I experienced this last week and I uh, thought it would be good to uh, record this uh, to let you know that it's uh, not rocket science. It's pretty simple, uh, pretty explanatory. Um, you just need to know how it works. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, if you liked this video, please uh, like, subscribe and leave your comments to the video uh, below here. And we will be back soon with other videos here on the ABC Networking Channel on YouTube.